I think I sent it to you as well. Just the numbers, I'm going to say them, referencing the additions of the Houston Cougars women's team compared to the additions of Baylor's women's team. Talking transfers. All right. Did you see this? Did you see it already, Andy? Yeah, that's what you sent me yesterday, correct? All right. Yep. Yeah. Baylor's three transfers. Yaya Felder averaged 22 points a game. This is, these are our numbers from this past season, 2022-23. Jada Walker, 12.9 points a game. Madison Bartley, 14.1 points per game. So that is what? 49 points right there, roughly? Mm -hmm. Houston Cougars women's basketball. Peyton McFarland, transfer from Utah. 1.5. Naya Boyd from UTEP, 11.6. Malia Johnson from Pitt, 8.5. Andy, that is what? 20? 22 points? So 49 compared to 22. The Juco player, I don't know how to pronounce her name, uh, Dejazira Diwara from Clarendon College. Juco, Clarendon College, Community College. Good numbers. 18.4 points, 16.1 rebounds. Andy, when I didn't tell you this, but I found out after I sent it out to folks, people I trust, well, not people, but person I trust, told me that she's not very good <laughs> and told me she's not six foot two. She's shorter than six mm -hmm. foot. So I, I, that gives me pause comparing Baylor's transfers from the portal to Houston's transfers for the portal, women's basketball, of course. And then also today, let me see today, the Rice South women's basketball program, Andy, got a transfer from Samford. And oh my gosh, I'm not going to try to say her name, but her first name is S U S S Y, last name N G. U L E F A C. Okay. Six three. Started all 30 games from San for Sanford this past season, Andy. In 24 minutes. 24 minutes. 11.5 points, five rebounds. Again, she started all 30 games for Sanford. The Houston transfers. Maya Boyd, 5'6", UTEP, 11.6. So let's see for Rice, was well, transferred to Rice from Sanford in 24 minutes, much better numbers. Malia Johnson, pit transfer, less scoring than Sussy. So Andy, Rice got a better transfer production-wise than Houston. What do you say, what are your comments when I say that, bring those numbers up to you? Uh, questionable. That's the, I mean, that's really the only word you can use. <clears throat> We're at a wait and see approach, Chris. That's all I can really say. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's all we can, that's all we can say. And let's, you can say it and I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out as a possibility. If some folks say, well, the players coach who's bring in, it could have been a bad situation. They get to Houston more minutes, give them more time to shine. Correct. That is possible. But you and I do not believe that the Houston Cougars women's basketball staff does a great job of developing players. Right or wrong? Uh, uh, proof in the pudding, I would, they would not get the benefit of the doubt over the course of the past few years. So <clears throat> we shall see. And of course, keep in mind, Houston is joining the Big 12. Big 12 women's basketball, even in, I think, a, a down year for the conference this past season, is still an upgrade for the Houston Cougars women's basketball program from the American. So, Andy, I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't. I'm not worried about it breaking. I, I don't have a lot of confidence in 
Coach Huey ending the drought this coming season and leading the team to the NCAA tournament. What say you? That's, yeah, like you said, it's not going out on a limb. <laughs> so I would agree. That'd be 10 years in a row. 10 years in a row. And <laughs> what's it going to take, Andy? What What is it going to take? Is it just waiting for his contract to expire before change is made? Will that be what it is? Who knows? We shall see. So we'll we'll see. I'm going to keep putting it out there. And maybe people who have more in, influence for decision making will make a change. Time will tell. Andy and I will continue covering the team.